Hello. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys um, a little bit about my daily parts journal. So this is based off of internal family systems. You can get it in a hard copy off of Amazon um, in paperback or on Etsy. I also have a digital version. I have a fillable PDF that you can download. And also there's a version for like an iPad pencil or Microsoft note, uh, just to kind of make it easy to check in with your parts. So I wanted to come on and just share a little bit more about this journal in case you're curious about how IFS could help you. Maybe you've been hearing the term, maybe you just have a desire to start journaling and would like some guidance with that to understand yourself better and to get into connection with your true self. Or maybe you've already been doing IFS for a while and you're again just looking for another kind of structured way to continue the practice. Now in IFS, practicing is important. You know, spending time just getting to know yourself better. And I think that's just important all of the time that we spend so much of our life externally focused. We spend so much time in our careers or our jobs or the different roles that we play. If you're, um, you know, a parent or a partner, um, we can get really, kind of caught up in the busyness of life, in the chores, in the trying to fit it all in, that we often don't spend very much time with ourselves. And actually the idea of spending time with yourself could actually feel kind of like daunting or overwhelming for a lot of people. And that's one of the things that I love about IFS is that is this really gentle way uh, to guide you back to yourself with compassion, uh, with with gentleness, with curiosity. And ultimately, I believe that every human being, we want to be seen. We want to belong. We want to be loved. And yet so many of us struggle with feeling that, with feeling safe to really see ourselves, with allowing other human beings to see us. And it's this polarization, this kind of like desire to be seen and on the other side, this fear of being seen. And that fear of being truly seen or vulnerable often comes from a very deep burden that many humans carry. This fear that if people really saw me, then you wouldn't love me or you wouldn't like me. And that often gets picked up when we're quite young, that we get this message that we're not good or that we're bad. Just the way our culture is or the way that parents parent it's it's not intentional the way our school system set up there's this very kind of like punishment or that you're kind of bad messaging that we get and as children we internalize that then if my parents are saying no to me or I'm getting in trouble it must mean that I am bad right or if my caregivers can't be here for me in a way that I need I must be doing something wrong so children take everything on personally and as you develop those beliefs about yourself and the world, as you experience things when you're younger, you take that into the rest of your life and it impacts your relationships, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with other people. And so IFS is a way kind of back to yourself, back to feeling safe, being seen back to your true self. And I can promise you that you are worthy, that you are good, that every part of you also has a positive intention for you, that we never need to get rid of parts, that it's not about punishing parts of us or shaming them for how they've kind of protected us in life. It's, it's really about meeting them and, and honoring them and gathering kind of their, their wisdom and, and hearing their story. And IFS creates a very kind of clear step-by-step -step way that you can begin this journey home to yourself. And when you come home to yourself, when you begin to understand yourself with more compassion, when you go inside and seek to understand yourself with curiosity, um, things become more clear. And 
your system begins to trust you and that I'm okay and that I am a good person and that, you know, my beliefs and my feelings matter, that I matter. And that changes your relationships to people on the outside. The way that you can set boundaries, the way that you can create intimacy with other people. When you start to understand yourself, it's a lot easier for other people to be also able to see you, for you to be able to communicate better. When we don't know ourselves very well, and we don't know our parts and, and what we need and what's okay and what's not okay, it's very difficult to communicate that to another person. Also, if we have a lot of kind of like past unresolved, um, I'm going to use the word trauma, but just experiences that made us feel less than or unlovable or not good, you know, all this kind of like complex trauma or small t traumas that have a huge impact on um, our sense of self or our well-being. Um, we continue to get pulled back to those places in our present day life. So I don't know if you've ever kind of been in a conflict with somebody that you love and all of a sudden you feel like you're in tr getting in trouble again, like you're three or five years old or 10, you know, and that's because you've activated that old wound. And then when you try to communicate, you might not have the words, you might not be able to clearly kind of talk through things because old wounds have been activated and you're no longer present anymore. Now you're operating from the past. And I think a lot of us get really confused with this and we start to blame other people for how we feel. When, when somebody does something and it really activates us, like it really hurts, um, it's often because you've got old wounds that came up. That person did not create those wounds in you. Those are old wounds that you need to be able to understand and, and to heal. But in our culture, we've gotten so used to like, you make me feel or you're doing this, or you don't make me feel safe. And for sure, people sometimes do things that aren't the greatest, but we've lost our ground, this like ability to create safety within ourselves. And to get really curious about that, I think we've lost this curiosity. We just kind of re are reacting to our environment without really understanding why am I so hurt right now? Or what's being brought up? And what does this part of me need from me and then also, what does it need me to communicate to this other person? You know, and so many times with my clients when we're going through things, I work a lot with like dating, um, you know, we go out into the world and start to feel, I don't know, like alone or we start to feel rejected or we start to feel abandoned. And we think that other people are doing this to us by how they communicate or, or what they're doing, but whenever we turn inward and I'll get the, you know, the client to kind of turn inside and start to notice that feeling of rejection or abandonment and what comes up is often them as a very young child, you know? So, and that could just create like so much understanding and compassion for ourselves. And it also makes it seem like the world is less um, activating if, if you can start to see that things in the present day are just activating younger parts of you that still just need healing. So now when I get activated in the world, I see it as an opportunity that I can go inside and I can get to know this part of me that is suffering. And so this is kind of long way around of what this journal can help you do is it helps you every day check in with your parts to see who is present, you know? And it also helps you access not just your parts and their wisdom, but self energy. And so in IFS, we have multiplicity of the mind. We're made up of multiple parts. And Richard Swartz, the founder of it, kind of divided parts into three different kind of categories. We have protectors, which are kind of like the parts that manage us. They are um, our parts that maybe worry, they plan, uh, they might have different roles. They like kind of preemptively help us navigate our life. Oftentimes our managers are who we feel like we are. They keep us on track. Uh, they do so much. And they often try to prevent us from getting hurt. And so what they try to do is prevent our what's called exiles, which are these younger parts of us that are carrying some of the overwhelming feelings from when we were younger. 
So if you were younger and you were told a lot that you were bad or you got in trouble for maybe your emotions or how you felt, a part of you would have developed this belief that I'm not lovable or if I feel a certain feeling, I'm going to lose love. And so our system will exile those younger parts that have those overwhelming memories and experiences because it's too much to kind of live our life with that really at the surface. But for some people, exiles can be quite on the surface. Um, but traditionally, kind of parts try to keep that away from our awareness because it's overwhelming. And then there's another kind of category of parts, which can also kind of manage our life called firefighters. And what they do is when we get activated, when we feel this intense pain or this overwhelm is they try to get us out of there as quick as possible. So some things like classic kind of firefighters would be any kind of like addictive behavior that could be like scrolling on your phone, watching TV, um, eating food, drugs, alcohol, all of those parts are often firefighters. But what they do is they act only once the wound has been activated. So once we're getting kind of flooded with with feeling uh, overwhelmed, with feeling not good enough, with feeling unworthy, firefighters step in. Managers often manage our, our day to day. But a lot of that, like in the journal I talk, I break all of kind of IFS down for you. I break these parts down for you. It's not so important that you understand all of it. It's really just about meeting your system where it is. That's what it is is just starting to get curious and, and notice who is present, who is helping you navigate your life. And I mentioned like a true self. So that isn't so much one of these parts, but it is who we are at our core. It's this healing force that exists within everyone, oftentimes connected to our hearts. You can never lose it. It is always there like the sun. Sometimes we can't see the sun because there's clouds covering it up. And that's kind of like our parts. But as they move back, there we are. There is this compassionate, curious, calm, connected, kind of healing force inside of us. And I break that down in this book as well, kind of like the eight C's of, uh, self, uh, of our true self and also the five P's. And so a lot of people sometimes don't feel very connected to self energy. Uh, but we have a lot more of it than we know. And for some people, we actually learn that self-energy isn't safe when we're younger. If our parents learned that self-energy wasn't safe, that brightness, that light. And so for some systems, it can feel a little bit scary or um, parts of a hard time trusting that self can actually help because it didn't when we were younger. It couldn't. We're dependent upon our, our caregivers uh, for survival, which is how we kind of get into this mess of protectors having to exile parts of us so that we can get love, so that we can survive. And so IFS is kind of like a way to tune up the system and, and redo any of that exiling that we might have had to do so that we could fit into our culture or with our parents. And this isn't about blaming anybody. It's just really about understanding how we've created the life that we've created or the you know, the cycles or the relationships that we get stuck in or the feelings that we get stuck in. Uh, this is a way to understand those parts and help them out of those roles. So again, it sees all of your parts have positive intentions. They are all trying to keep you safe, but sometimes the way that they're doing it is a little outdated and is actually causing the very harm that they originally tried to prevent. Um, in this book, I also kind of break down common like parts fears um, of, of what would happen if they couldn't do this for you. I also break down common parts that you'll notice in people's system um, or in your own system. So, you know, one common part is like an inner critic. Uh, inner critics are sometimes one of the first parts to develop because we're often told when we're younger that you're being bad. And so a part develops and says, you know, I don't like it when you're told that you're being bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you you're bad and then you'll never get in trouble again. So we kind of like internalize those voices and it's trying to motivate us. It's trying to make us do better, but often it causes so much shame, so much hurt, but that's not the intention. 
you know, and so intention versus impact in inside of our own system and, and a lot of it at the outside too. So um, in this journal, I also kind of break down this daily parts check-in for you and kind of create it as easy as possible way for you to kind of tune in and get to know your parts. And although this is called a daily parts journal, you could do it once a week, you could do it as needed. Um, it's really just a tool to have there for you. And I don't know if you can really see this, but these are kind of just like the prompts that you'll be walked through each day. It takes me about 15 minutes to do a full check-in. Um, sometimes less, it depends, but it has really saved me when I haven't been able to get a hold of my counselor and I've started to feel really kind of like activated um, or, or triggered and I, I need some space. And it also just helps in my day to day if I'm able to like get my parts motivated enough to check in of just like kind of tapping into their wisdom, making a plan for the day, uh, accessing some more self energy, which really feels nice to have our parts kind of like unblend and give us a bit of space. You know, self-energy is like this unlimited potential, this unlimited energy, you know, that can help so much when we're feeling kind of like burnt out or parts are overwhelmed. It really does have this ability to heal, which is amazing. And it's inside all of us. And so I kind of just wanted to guide you just to experience, um, a check-in. I might share just some examples of what I notice when I do that. Um, but let's, let's just kind of, I'm just going to guide you, I think right now through a check-in on TikTok. I've also shared some of my own check-ins and I will upload some other videos of just like me walking through my daily check-in. So you get like a little bit more examples and I'll give a little bit more instruction on like what that can look like or what that can feel like and what your options are there. But for now, if you'd like, just, if you have my journal, you can grab that. If you don't just grab a piece of paper and a pen, if you'd like, or you can just do this in your own mind. But I do suggest grabbing a piece of paper and a pen because I'm going to guide you through um, just a couple options to externalize some of your parts, which can help to develop a relationship, but everybody's system's a little bit different. So really listening to what your parts need, how they show up. Some people can visualize their parts. Sometimes people can't, that's okay. Um, and it might be different on different days. Sometimes you might get a lot. Sometimes you might not get a lot. Sometimes there might be a lot of protection. Sometimes it might be quite easy to connect with a singular part. Uh, you might get flooded with lots of parts. It's all okay. All you're doing is getting curious and just noticing what's going on right now inside of you. So just taking a piece of paper or the journal if you have it. And what you're going to start by doing is just writing down the parts that you're noticing. And you can do that by just noticing the dialogue that you've had with yourself so far this morning. You know, I always notice parts that are quite motivated to do work or get things done. And then I have other parts that really pull me back and are like, no, you need to rest. Resting is important. And that's a common polarization that I have inside of myself. But just sit down and kind of get curious about your thoughts, kind of what your priorities are for the day. Maybe there's a to-do list part. Maybe there's an analytical part. Maybe there's a shutdown part. Maybe there's an anxious part or a worry part. It could be a depressed part. Whatever you're noticing, kind of just taking an inventory. There might be sensations that you're noticing in your body or pain can also be a part. Just tuning in, just noticing your own inner dialogue today and writing it down. I'll just give you a couple more seconds just to notice who's present right now or who has been present already today.
And then you're going to kind of take a look at all of those parts and choose one that you would like to get to know better today. So this is your target part or polarization. So I just kind of use my example of the parts that are motivated to work and the parts of me that would rather I just rest or really want to be aware of my energy or conserving it. So you could pick just a singular part or two parts that are kind of polarized that kind of go back and forth or fight with each other a little bit. to ask yourself how open is my heart to get to know these parts or this part no right or wrong here again with this question just noticing I often get around like a 40 50 percent if you get over 25 it's okay to like move forward I always like to ask sometimes if it's just like wherever it is if those parts that are guarding my heart would be willing to give me just a little bit more space. We just need a little bit of openness in our heart though to proceed. And if they won't, if you're like, they feel 0% open uh, or 5%, you know, or under 25, you could see what your heart is worried about would happen if it gave you a little bit more space. If you had a bit of openness to this part, just sharing that with it. It's creating a little bit of connection. And then just really starting to notice this part in your body or in your mind. How does it show up? Do you notice it in your stomach, in your shoulders? Is it inside your body or is it outside your body? So taking up a lot of space or a little bit of space. Are there any sensations connected to it? Does it feel heavy or light? Tingling? How far does it expand? Just really noticing how this part is showing up. It might be in your head. There might be thoughts. words connected to this part just writing that down whatever you notice is finding this part in the mind and the body just getting really curious there might be a, a visualization of this part and if it is, you can always draw that really quickly. Sometimes I just see like parts as like a cartoon character or a blob. My drawing is always horrible. That's not really the point, but so I'm just to externalize it can help. And in my journal, I do have a little part where you can draw the part. I'll just give you another minute or so just to focus on this part, to find it and flush it out a little bit. Draw it if that feels good. you to ask yourself how do I feel towards this part now this question is assessing for self energy also looking for the other parts that are present so if you get I'm frustrated with this part or I'm annoyed with this part I want you to write those parts down on a piece of paper in the corner I'm like in a gallery and just see if they're okay with giving you a little bit of space so you can get to know this part if they're not okay with it, you're gonna spend a little bit of time with these parts, what their fears are around giving you some space with this target part. 
But if they're also okay with just kind of giving you a little bit of space for a little bit, they can always jump back in. You can put them to the side. And when you ask yourself the question, how do I feel towards this part? We're really just looking for some openness or some curiosity, desire to get to know the part better. If it's neutral, there just has to be like a little bit of curiosity. You can even ask your protective system if it would be willing to give you just a little bit of space for curiosity. And if they feel like there's a threat, they can jump in. We're just seeing if they would be willing. And if you can get a little bit of openness or a little bit of curiosity, I just want you to share that with the target part. just see if that part can feel you there wanting to get to know it if it can just asking it what it feels like to have you there and i just want you to ask the part if there's anything it would like you to know and then just write that down It's important for me to know, would you like me to know about your job? And as I go through these kind of questions, if you want more time anywhere, just pause the video and you can just spend a bit more time on each question. ask the part what its positive intention is. What is it trying to do for you? Just writing that down. Ask the part what it's afraid would happen if it couldn't do this for you. If it couldn't do its job, what is it afraid would happen to you? And whatever it says, you can dive a little bit deeper into what would be so bad about that. You get to a bit of a core fear. Parts only do what they do often to keep us safe, to protect us, especially when they're burdened still. And if it's positive intention makes sense to you or you have any appreciation or understanding for, for what it's trying to do, just sharing it with the part. Whenever a part serves something that makes sense to you or you understand or you feel any compassion, really just pausing to really like share that with this part to create this self to part connection. Any of that understanding energy, any of that compassion that is coming from self. And then just spending a little bit of time, just letting this part share whatever else it would like you to know about it. How long it's been doing its job. Where it learned to do its job. You know, in this journal, I have a bunch of questions to kind of guide you through just spending time with parts, just kind of guiding you through getting to know them better. To develop a relationship with yourself. If you want, you can pause the recording and you can spend as much time here as you'd like. I am going to be creating a little bit of a longer course just kind of to complement this 
daily parts journal to have like a little bit more guidance as you go through your daily check-ins. If you're interested in that course, you can always leave a comment on this video. I will be posting the link to the course once I create it in this thread. Um, and I'm also going to be running some groups where we can get together and you'll be guided through a parts check-in. We'll be talking about um, some common parts people have, such as, you know, I mentioned kind of like an inner critic. We'll be working with polarizations. We can work with addiction parts. Um, so there'll be space to just check in and work with whatever is present in the live for you. And we will have some weeks where we are going to be diving in into a particular system or a particular area of, of IFS. Um, I am going to be doing a workshop on this weekend. Actually, I'm not sure of that date, <laughs> but um, and then I'll be starting on March 26th. We'll also on Tuesdays from 12 to 1. There will be an offering or a group that specific time to kind of check in with parts. But if you want more information on that, again, you can feel free to reach out. You can check my social media, which will all be linked below or my website. We'll have all of that information on there. You can join my newsletter if you'd like. I'll be sharing more information on there. I don't send out a lot of emails, but when something's coming up, I will. And yeah, just if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it, to share it, to leave a comment. If you would like more videos on particular topics or like more support with checking in and journaling with your parts, um, please let me know. I'm more than happy to kind of tailor some of the content to you. And just thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you've got a little bit of time, a little bit of connection. Uh, with your system. And again, if you're really interested in diving into this more, making this one of your kind of self-care practices, you can find your this internal family systems daily parts journal on Amazon in paperback kind of copy, or it's on Etsy. And so I will have those links below this video. Again, thanks so much. Hope you have a great day.